became apparent I had to pop some popcorn for this one, y'all, because y'all want to tell me what the... It's like I can't escape the Shy Monday curse. At least there's only one truck right now. Up to. Now, because the fiance fans, it's your main man, Master Cell, leave the Master Nights of the Roundtable of Company 1 subscribe to the spin -off. And since this is the first video I did after reaching this milestone, I'd like to thank you all for 400 subs. Despite Yakuza Fiance coming out in a relatively good time, I was off to a late start today, so we're back here. Shy fans know this location very well. And sometimes Freeman fans. Freeman aired a freaking year ago. Now, this episode of Yakuza Fiance put a handful of things into perspective. And it started off with our boy, Hiroshima, eating out this girl. Yeah, you know, he doesn't, he normally does the Yoshino, you know, take her out to dinner type shit. On a serious note, though, and honestly, to be a buck fifty, not actually really surprising, we came to find out boy Kimoshima would be messing around, or rather, just put it in simple terms, sleeping around. However, when one of the girls that he's currently going to town on asks him about Yoshino, if he's in love with somebody, he immediately says yes. I do have to point this out, guys. Typically, when it comes to things that involve sex or sex scenes and shows, I kind of dissect it, right? I'm not going to do that here because much hasn't happened, but shout out to my boy for being one of the few guys I ever see these days in anime eat pussy. I'm not going to say the name of the show, but there's actually a franchise, not even the anime, but yeah, there was a couple of times where guys got fellatio and reciprocated nothing. As a guy who actually plays a big game on foreplay and oral sex himself, my tongue game is fire acts about me. I like to thank Hiroshima for not being selfish out here. And I don't give a fuck less who you are. To whatever man needs to hear this, sir, your dick is not enough. Putting in work out here with your selfish ass. Which boy I can see with this, for this girl that Kirishima was with, but whatever. Her head and ass talk about how she hate Yoshino just for how she looks and shit. What? What, do you love this man? I mean, you really want to play devil's advocate. Him thinking about another girl while, she's with, while he's with you will piss anybody off. But I like to think that girl knows she's just one of the girls on the list that Kirishima could call up just for some ass. You really think up to this moment before he met Yoshino that any girl that he was messing around with wasn't a no strings relationship? But that being said though, let's get to Yoshino, who tries to enjoy a good night's sleep, but is unable to. Cause despite having locks on everything, Thing and chains <laughs> involved. I'm gonna try to stop having this damn trash in my bathroom. Kirishima is able to enter the house. Now, if I'm honest with y'all, I immediately came to the conclusion, despite Yoshino being like, maybe he's coming here to kill me, maybe he's coming here to do this, blah blah. I pretty much already knew the fact that he probably just watching her sleep. To be fair, this man's a creep. Tell me I'm wrong. But her feeling, you know, this sense of unsecurity because somebody's able to get into a house despite locking everything up. Yeah, you can't necessarily blame her for keeping that knife by the bed. Even when she already came to the conclusion that it's Kirishima. There's actually been a conversation in barber shops I've been to a couple of times where they talk about if somebody breaks into your house, even if you're able to stop them or even if it isn't that big a deal, how your whole vibe and energy of the place you once lived in is just completely thrown off forever. Don't break in people's houses, y'all. A bigger inconvenience than you can believe. And again, I want, we want to just be like Kirishima just watching her sleep, right? Which is what he tried to say. But when he broke in there the second time, well, Yoshino had the knife. He looked at her and started to braid her hair. We can hear her talk about how her all of a sudden pulling the knife on the guy could have been the extreme reaction to that, but... Bro, was that not supposed to wake her up? <laughs> Imagine she was just asleep just to be asleep. Was, was nothing supposed to happen? You're breaking into somebody's house, and then you start touching them. Most people get shot for that. You can legally shoot somebody for that. However, the elephant in the room here the entire time this was going on was the fact that since this is Kirishima, of course Yoshino pulling the knife on her wasn't going to work at all. And because I can't stop talking about this franchise, you didn't know that this was the franchise I was slick alluding to earlier, Kirishima just went to mode just now. Do not pull a knife on the Yakuza. You guys are learning a lot of lessons. However, Yoshino is, was not actually harmed because again, Kirishima not actually going to hurt her. But, you know, self-defense. God damn it. However, just to cap off the lid on this, as harmless and easy Kirishima trying to make a sound, Guys, using a string to break through some chains and a lock, being able to pit locks like that, as easy as you may make a sound, breaking and entering is breaking and entering. And just in case you guys play Life is Strange, just entering somebody's house, even without breaking in, can still get you shot. Don't just run up in people's houses. That life that's glorified on TV is not real. Now, the preceding conversation between <laughs> Yoshino and Kirishima was definitely an interesting one. Because the reason he was actually breaking into her house in the first place is indeed to watch her sleep. But it's because he believed that that was the one moment where she didn't look mad because nobody looks mad in their sleep. Well, yeah. people can make all kinds of faces and expressions while they're having a nightmare of sorts, but in a general sense, I guess, 
and Yoshino couldn't deny that she typically guess she may look mad when she's around Kirishima. However, we don't even have to go into the reasons why that is at this point in the show, right? Three episodes was enough for first impressions. And of course she brings up when anybody would bring up how she's not going to have a happy face on by the fact that you're breaking into a house. Especially not even trying to waste time by using the whole crime and eat crime thing as an excuse why he shouldn't do so. You know, just as a side note that I just thought about, you know the way Yoshino got up for that knife and tried to turn around on Kirishima? If that was a gun instead, it would have made no difference, huh? But Yoshino does also bring up the fact that she can tell that Kirishima would be hanging out with other women. Or, again, just telling, calling it what it is, sleeping around. So much as even pointing out the hickeys on this man's neck. Calling out her, her granddad used to do it all the time, but he know, she knows how a man moves when he's just trying to, you know, get some ass, come back to the house being unnoticed. And it makes it even worse to look for Kirishima and see how Kirishima isn't even going back to his own damn house. Like, bro, you're sleeping around with other girls just to go back to your main girl's house. She supposed to be happy. Do we even just put down on Kirishima being young? Because that has nothing to do with Yakuza type shit. Or does it? Now, Kirishima is very forward and at the end of the day, an honest person. So he not only does he not deny this, Yoshino points this out as at least a good quality of this man. And what prompts him to do so is the fact that he does ask uh, why she doesn't seem mad that she, she's out with other girls because she doesn't like him. And because Kirishima is as straightforward as he is, when you say you don't like somebody, he assumes you just don't like anything about him. He hasn't grasped the concept of just because somebody doesn't like you in that way doesn't mean they don't like anything about you. It's not that black and white. I thought we was past this, Master Knights. However, this little, just smallest compliment is enough to make Hiroshima go crazy and completely flip the script. Oh, so you do like me again? Tackling Yoshino to the ground out of affection, right? And even with it being Hiroshima, this is just betraying all the illegal shit right now. <laughs> because the fucked up thing about all this, Despite us having this understanding that's happening right here, especially an insight of both characters' mindset and psyches right now, as well as coming to not even necessarily a mutual agreement, but again, that understanding mutual between both of them, here comes Kirishima making it sound like this was all a lost cause. Because now, in this man's mind, right, he needs to make Yoshino like him enough for her to care. <laughs> about him sleeping with other girls. Because if Yoshino was freaking, around, freaking off with other guys, he would want to kill them guys. So, he pretty much wants Yoshino to care enough about him sleeping with other girls, so she would want to kill him. Meaning he sees him fooling around with other girls as a way to get closer to Yoshino. You're telling me at this point Kirishima's plan is to literally fuck around until he finds out? Nigga, what? I like you, but you don't like me, so I'm gonna keep fucking other people until you do. A lot of young guys think like that. Fuck. Let's, let's, let's move on. For the most part, that was his episode, even that only went up to the halfway point of it. There was a chunk of this episode where, you know, the Yakuza meeting, all the head guys in there had to have a big meeting, and Yoshino and Kirishima was invited. However, they wasn't actually part of the meeting itself. So not only did we really not hear exactly what was going on, but all these guys who honestly look like background executives at Hunter Hunter. Studio Dean trying to be not Madhouse. At the free man, I can't blame you. But we did get to see some stuff going on with pictures that Kirishima was showing Yoshino of their grandparents who went back when they was cool before this whole de debacle happened and they had to make a treaty and shit. And while this was briefly addressed later on in the episode, it's kind of a thing where like maybe this in the grand scheme of this entire episode, it doesn't mean too much, but obviously something that's going to be a big play later on if not running through the show. Don't sleep on this. Now this Hote. Hote. <laughs> Am I saying his name right? Hote? Okay, Hote. Hotei meets with Yoshino, but you know, they pretty much, you know, just having a meeting, how things are going type shit, because we come to find that Hotei was pretty much the guy who raised Yoshino in the first place, seeing how her granddad wasn't really around. Too busy fucking. God damn it, Yakuza men. Where are all the Akuras in this life anyways? Am I involved in the gang gangs myself? No. Is there anything in the animes like real life? Maybe. But shit, there gotta be levels. What the niggas that just wanna go home, watch Jacko and not bother nobody? Now, of course, the elephant in the room in this episode for the latter half of it kind of plays off the elephant that was left at the end of last week's episode. Because even before meeting up with Hote, Yoshino is all of a sudden on the phone with the same man that we seen at the end of last week's episode. Come to find how this man's gonna all of a sudden walk up on her and Hote, as somebody Yoshino very much knows for a long time, there was by the name of Shoma. After figuring out Kirishima has been sleeping around with other girls, there's a lot of random men showing up around Yoshino, isn't there? I thought she was like reclusive. And, and even if these people are a bunch of people that Yoshino grew up with, for say, it's not exactly fitting to that interacting with anybody ever for someone that you had at the beginning of the show. But I digress. Here comes Shoma. Yes, yeah, sure indeed, looking like Hiroshima with his hair down. 
damn near should I say a messy version of Kirishima. And I mean that in more ways than just how he looked, because apparently his look that he had was going to be primarily be that. Not bringing any change of clothes, despite believing, you know, immediately believing that he's going to be spending the night. Typically when people have to change their clothes like that, they at least think about a shower. Did this man wear that the baby either? Bruh. What was your hotel plans before this, sir? Now, of course, the whole thing about these two knowing each other for a long time comes in the conversation while we got man service going on. Our boy out here is pretty much going shirtless as hell, showing off the most tattoos we have seen so far with a very muscular body. We started out this episode with a girl naked from the waist down getting that pussy ate. We're not going to act like the man service is the biggest thing, y'all. <laughs> you gotta give the lady something, man. <laughs> Even if it includes this man all of a sudden coming out of the room with his shirt off. <laughs> but in that conversation while he's trying, trying out clothes, we come to find that he was 13 when, they, when he met Yoshino and he was getting into some heavy shit when it comes to him involving himself with the Yakuza at that young age. Which he tried to blame on the fact that he was drunk. Yoshino shot that down, which I'm glad she did, because a reminder that you were 13 at the time, sir. Oh, wait, she didn't shoot it down. She just said she was, he was 13 doing this because of other reasons. Wild drunk. At least we know. Did I wait till I was 21 to start drinking? No, but I was an adult, damn it. I didn't start fucking until I was an adult either. Y'all tripping. Just throwing that out there. Now, this video's getting long, so let's kind of wrap things up. After everything is said and done and Shoma gets his short bot, they go back to a hotel because of how late it is. And... and <laughs> Dan playing devil's advocate this episode did not exactly make it feel like Yoshino needs to be going home with Kirishima breaking that. This nigga still showed up right outside at the end of the episode like he knew where Yoshino was at. Oh wait, he got trackers on her. I forgot episode two. This video's almost over. I'm just, I'm just gonna walk off, alright? I'm not gonna keep doing this, y'all. Like if my money's videos is not early, they're gonna be late as fuck. But to wrap things up, Yoshino starts talking about her grievances and whatnot. And she pretty much, you know, starts talking about how she feels about the whole situation with Kirishima, where she in. And, you know, they're... At the end of the day, the cons outweigh the pros. Meaning that this was gonna come equipped with the line of her saying she don't, wouldn't mind going back to Osaka with Shoma. Which of course Shoma prompted him to be like, well shit, let's go now. And while that obviously isn't happening, that doesn't stop him from taking a smoke break. And yes, this come equipped with the scene with eventually he, Shoma being told that he can't smoke there by an approaching Kirishima. And we started off in this episode, believe it started off next episode with them to finally have a not a confrontation, but to be fair, I seen you stalking me last in the episode two, and now the end of episode three, you're at a hotel with my girl. What's up, nigga? Not saying it's gonna be hostile, but it's <laughs> now speaking of elephants in the room. Of course, when we start this episode, we're talking about Kirishima sleeping around with other girls, and all of a sudden, random guys is all of a sudden around Yoshino. The anime is giving you the feels as in Shoma could be either an outlet for Yoshino against Kirishima or be him liking Kirishima that. Shoma liking Yoshino himself just wanted to get her out of this situation because fuck Kirishima which is the energy we feel Shoma has towards Kirishima even if Yoshino wasn't around. <laughs> so obviously this is bigger than what we're seeing right now. But when that happens of course in times like this you simply gotta let the anime cook right? So I not know on to next week. If you watch this video, leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. Like this video for me, and I'll see y'all. Peace out. Subscribe to that spin move. I'm not gonna spin right now. There's a bunch of cars in. Nobody can bind their business.